Hello everyone, I'm Callum Emery and today I will be presenting research that myself, Dr. Michael Herman and Dr. Ola Putkowski conducted regarding an evolutionary swarm when presented with equally valid options. Jean Buridan was a French philosopher who posited a scenario where a donkey is equidistant from two stacks of hay. This being a rational donkey, it cannot decide between the two and the donkey starves to death. This rather grim scenario is known as Buridan's donkey or Buridan's ass and it highlights the concept of the paradox of choice, where giving the system more freedom of choice does not always reap benefits. We explore this idea using an evolutionary swarm operating in a 2D circular environment. Each agent of the swarm is aiming to maximize its energy, which it can acquire from sources, represented in the figures here as green disks. If the agent is inside a green disk, it receives energy with the sources centers providing the most. Each source provides the same amount of energy, and the energy is not shared amongst the agents present, i.e. all the sources are equally as good as each other regardless of time or the rest of the swarm's position. The swarm is allowed to operate for a fixed amount of time, and afterwards the swarm is then evolved, which is done using the roulette wheel scheme. The number of sources are fixed, as well as their positions for each swarm's lifetime. We used environments that consisted of one to eight sources. Each agent has distance sensing with the range being large enough to always cover the environment. The agents have four distance sensors, one in front, one on the left, one on the right, and one behind. This is displayed as the red dashed lines in the image where the gap between the dashed lines are the distance sensors. If a source triggers the distance sensor, then it is the distance between the agent and the edge of the source that is detected. If more than one source triggers the sensor, then only the closest source is detected. The distance will also be triggered if inside the source, but it will not provide information on how close it is to the center. The agents also have the ability to communicate locally with their neighbors. The agent will accumulate signals within discretized regions as seen by the blue circle in the image. Lastly, the agent will be able to detect the energy change at each time step. The agent is governed by an element network with 11 inputs, one for each of the distance sensors, signaling regions, and one for the energy change. The outputs of the element network controller are acceleration of the speed, angular acceleration, and the signal, which is to be heard by the other agents. The weights do not change during each generation. The evolution between each generation affects the weights within the network, i.e. the best are kept with our controllers copied with mutated weights. This graph shows the average swarm's total energy gathered at the end of each generation. When one source is present, the swarm is able to learn quickly and optimizes its behavior to gain around 70,000. When more sources are added, however, the swarm's efficiency significantly drops, which is counterintuitive as more space is covered by a reward. While there is no clear pattern between number of sources and the total energy gathered, it can be observed that in general increase in the number of sources does lead to a reduced performance. Here we've plotted a sample of trajectories from the trained swarms. With one source, it is clear to see that the agents have not only learned to move towards the source but also towards the center. As we increase the number of sources though, the agent starts to cycle between the sources, and while we did not investigate heavily into this, it can be observed that the swarm can either go on a continuous cycle as a strategy, as seen in the bottom left figure, or remain within the source for a short while before being pulled by the attraction of the other sources, observed in the bottom right figure. We ran the same experiments, except the agents no longer had the ability to communicate amongst themselves. If we compare this to the previous set of simulations, the swarm's performance improves in all environments. This is an indication that perhaps the signaling is in fact acting as noise that the swarm is having difficulty overcoming. To test this further, we trained a swarm initially with the ability to signal turned on for 200 generations. We then turned this off and trained for a further 200 generations. We then repeated this process, but vice versa. The signaling was initially switched off and then we turned it back on after 200 generations. The first 200 generations are very similar to what has been observed already. The swarm learns to optimize their behavior and is similar to the outcome as seen earlier with regards to performance. However, when the signaling is disabled, there is a dip in performance for some of the swarms, notably for the swarms trained on two, three, and four number of sources. These swarms would have been reliant on the ability to communicate and the information the signaling neighbors provided. Regardless, all the swarms not only learn to operate without signaling, the performance also significantly improves. This is further highlighted here, where the swarms initially began without signaling, and signaling was then turned on after 200 generations. 
When signaling is switched on, the performance of all swarms vastly drops, which makes sense as the controllers are now attempting to understand the new flood of information coming in via the neighbor's signals. While the swarm does improve its performance through the retraining phase, it never performs better than when signaling is disabled. This is in combination with the previous results does suggest that the swarm is given too much information and it is having difficulty trying to disseminate said information. The signaling, specifically, could be acting as a repellent force, which therefore drives some agents away from the center of the source, thus encouraging the cyclic behavior or, just in general, confusing the agents. We wanted to explore the generality of the swarms as well, which in this particular case is how well did the swarm perform when operating in different environments than the one it was trained on. We trained our swarms in an environment with a fixed number of sources, and then each swarm operated in each of the eight different environments. They did this once with no learning in between. Similar to before, we trained multiple swarms and found the average swarm behavior when operating in these different environments. The graph presented here shows the average energy change of all agents in the swarm in all of the environments. Swarms that were trained with three and four sources performed the best when operating in different environments, while those trained in one and eight sources performed the worst. The fact that the swarm's best general performance is when trained with three or four sources could be significant as this is the same number of distance sensors as well. This could imply how the distance sensors are being exposed to the sources is important as well. If the swarm trained with only one source in the world, then only one distance sensor can ever be triggered at any time. Thus, when operating in different environments, the agents are confused when more than one distance sensor is being triggered. Similarly, with eight sources in the world, it is quite likely that all the distance sensors will be triggered quite frequently, never letting the agents to learn how to operate when there is not a source to be detected. This gave the indication that the ability to see all the sources may not be a viable approach, and this too could be leading to information overload. To test this idea, we allowed the swarm to not only evolve their controller, but also their physical characteristics as well, specifically the range of their distance sensors. We began with a distance sensing range of only one unit, as we could then see if the swarms preferred to constantly increase their distance sensing range or not. As a quick reminder, the radius of the environment is 2.5 units, and it should be noted that signaling was enabled for all these simulations. If only one source was present, the swarm gains an average range of roughly 5, which means that the swarm evolved to always cover the world and always see where the source is. If there were two sources, and the range does not change much, remaining at around 1. What this means is that while the agents do not always see a source, when they do detect one, they will never detect the other source. At the source's radius is 0.5, the distance between the two sources is 2. With three or more sources, the distance sensing range drops practically to 0, as the swarm prefers to exclusively rely on their communication capability with their fellow agents. In all cases, the swarm performs the best when they are also given the ability to evolve their sensing range. All of this is indicative that the swarm never wants to observe more than one source, as they will get confused and will cause indecisive behavior resulting in suboptimal performance. Overall, we see that for the swarm to perform optimally, it sometimes desires to remove the freedom of some choices, and in this particular case, by limiting the information it can acquire. While it is perhaps easy to manipulate the physical aspects of a simulated agent, this is not the case for physical robotic systems. There are some who are working towards this concept of physical and cognitive evolution, such as Professor Josh Bongard of the University of Vermont, Professor Emma Hart of Napier University, and Professor Andy Tyrell of the University of York. It is still perhaps a thought that needs more exploring when utilizing evolutionary approaches. This work was supported by the Edinburgh Center for Robotics and the EPSRC. If you have any questions or wish to have discussion about any of the points made either here or in the paper, then please do not hesitate to get in touch, which you can do by emailing callum.imri at york.ac.uk. Thank you for watching this brief video.